Are we live? Yeah, I think we're, I think we're back. Hey, everyone. It's the Wrong Kid Show with me, Kieran. Uh, it's Tuesday at 2, which I think is the time when we start this show. Uh, I'm really excited to be back with you guys with some more stories, some more art, some more science. Uh, we're just going to wait for a few more of our friends to, to catch up with us, but I'm really excited to be back. Um, I promise you I have a better script this time to hopefully keep me more on pace. I know I sort of lost I sort of lost the, the stream of everything last time, so I'm really excited to maybe be a little bit more focused. Um, I'm going to zoom in on it on my phone right now, see if anyone's in the comments. Oh, wow. Hey. Hey, Brady. What's going on? There's so many people here. Hi, everyone. Uh, as uh, I would say a preview of what we're doing today, last week I wore my dinosaur socks. Saw some uh, shout-outs to my dinosaur socks and dimensions last week. Loved it. Uh, today... Uh, wearing my amphora shirt, my amphora shirt, because we're going to be making uh, amphora scratch art in a little bit. We're going to be talking about amphoras, and we're going to talk about stories overall. So I'm really excited uh, to be here. Who's uh, who, who all is here? Oh, Jenna. Wow, I know that person too. Uh, we had so many uh, of our ROM kids families uh, join in last week, and that was so cool to see. Uh, I was talking with our teachers and our staff over the last week, uh, and especially from our ROM Kids Junior team, our Tiny Tots team, our Early Learners team. Teacher Sarah Rachel says hi to everyone. Teacher Trisha, Teacher Maddie Long, Teacher Johnson, Teacher Terrence, uh, Teacher Alex, they all say hi. We will all miss you all at the ROM, and we can't wait to welcome you back uh, in the future. But it was so cool to see you guys uh, doing the art with us. Uh, got a lot of... Uh, comments later on that it was like a fun learning experience the kids got to do cool art uh and then they enjoyed the stories i want to send a special shout out to Rhea and remy that are watching right now i know that they are prepared remember to have extra black crayon because we're going to need that today so if just to get you prepared before we start the things that you're going to need are paper it does just paper um maybe a pencil uh some crayons particularly a black crayon that will play a very specific role in this um, and then a skewer or some sort of like sharp but safe object for children uh, to use to make uh, some lines in the art that we're gonna make okay we are making um, amphoras today scratch our amphoras uh, and I'm really excited about that okay so this is all the material you need you're gonna need paper pencil um, crayons for underneath and then a black crayon to go on top, and then a sharp object to draw your uh, picture on top of your amphora, okay? So folks, if you need to get the art material, you can do it now, you can do it later. Uh, we're gonna save this, and eventually it'll also get onto the ROM uh, website, okay? It's like ROM Kids with Kieran. I don't know, Google it. Uh, and it'll all be there, okay? Um, anyone else, any other things? Uh, Oh, hi from Valentino and Andrea. Oh, wow, and Allegro. Wow, that's a lot of great things. Um, oh, Patrick's in the chat. Nice to see you, Patch. Um, Ethan and Alec are here. That's cool. Jack and Max, say hi to everyone. We say hi back to them, too. Um, Asher and Ethan say hi. Schneck says hi, our assistant camp director. That's really cool. Uh, Vivian and Nora say hi. Okay, good. So our squad is here. Everyone's here. I think we're ready to go. Um, now, between last week and this week, I wrote a theme song, okay? I wrote a theme song uh, for the ROM Kids show. This is the live debut for as many of these shows that we're gonna be able to do, we're gonna do this theme song, okay? Um, my lyrics are here because I'm not good at remembering things, okay? But here we go. Uh, we're now at the theme song portion of the event. Welcome to the ROM Kids Show with me. We'll do some crafts and tell some stories. Let's talk about science, art, and history. Welcome to the ROM Kids Show, starring you and me. Hey, we did it! That was the theme song! Okay, that was fun. Hi everyone, it's Kieran from the ROM. Uh, today our topic is uh, stories. And our art project is amphoras, okay? This is, the, this is the art project that we're going to do today. 
Um, one of the things that you might have noticed from last week, and if you've ever come to ROM camp, because uh, that's what we're trying to do here is bring museum camp to you at home, um, is we love to tell stories. Stories are such a great way to get information and ideas across. And all of our teachers are incredible storytellers at the museum because we find the best way for kids to learn is to not just focus on facts, but to focus on stories that contain those facts, okay? And that's how we find uh, is a really incredible way to learn. So today we're gonna talk about stories overall. We're gonna tell some fun stories. If I do this right, I will remember to tell you um, a story about a gladiator uh, a story about a lost Triceratops beak, um, and a story about a time we had a giant water fight at the ROM, okay? Um, so those are all things that we're gonna do, uh, and we're also gonna do our, our project, which is, which is our amphora, okay? And I'll tell you some stories about amphoras too. Um, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go from our seat over here down to our art table to get started. Ooh, I should invent some transition music for a future episode. That would be really fun, right? Transition music. Oh, Vincent's in the group chat. Hi. That's cool. Um, all right. Yeah, drop any questions you have in there, um, and I'll try and keep, keep up to date with what's going on in the group chat uh, while we do our art. Okay, so things that you're going to need. Let's get our art ready. Let's start our art, and then we're going to tell our stories, okay? And if I did a good job, I have stuff down here. Okay, so number one, you need a piece of paper. Doesn't matter the size. At our home, we only have small paper, tiny paper. Some would say cute size paper. Cute size paper right here. If you want to do a bigger one, feel free. It can have lines on it. It could be a, a page from your bullet journal. It doesn't really matter. Any size of paper, okay? Then you're going to need a pencil. This one also has an eraser on it. Could be useful. I don't know. I have a Sharpie, you don't need a Sharpie. I just like to outline things so that you can see what we're doing on the page. You're gonna need your crayons, okay? You're gonna specifically need a black crayon. All right, I broke this one yesterday after making all the, the demos. And then a sharp object that is safe, okay? We're using a skewer. Um, parents at home, depending on the age group, try and figure out an object that you think is suitable uh, for your child, okay? We're using a skewer often used with barbecuing, also often used at the ROM for crafts and for scratch art, okay? So, um, I'm trying to stay on topic. We've done our materials. Oh, so what exactly are we making? Well, I just wanna briefly show you what an amphora looks like, okay? Amphoras are uh, vessels or containers that were used all over ancient Mesopotamia, okay? This one is from the Roms collection right here. It was used in ancient Rome, used in ancient Greece, and there are these containers that would contain things like olive oil, wine, water, fish, all different sorts of things, all right? And often, they told stories on them on the outside, all right? So that's what we're making today. That's the idea of it. Um, so, the directions of what we're doing, okay? So, again, we're making some scratch art. This is an amphora. So, uh, because we don't have templates to use, you can use your imagination, you can use your curiosity, you can use anything that comes to your mind. This is art, and then when we do art, you're allowed to do whatever you want, okay? So you don't have to follow my directions fully, uh, even by a bit, you can take it your own way, all right? Um, but the way that I found is a useful way to make this type of shape is first what I like to do is with my pencil on my paper is I'll make a heart, all right? And the heart allows me to sort of get how it's really big on the outside. You see on the outside of the amphora, it's really big, right? And so that can kind of sometimes be a hard shape to make. And again, for my Hercules inspired amphora, because we watched Hercules yesterday, um, it's kind of like a heart shape, all right? So I've started with my heart. What I'm gonna do after is at the bottom of the heart, I'm gonna make a little stand. And that's how the amphora, the vessel, would stand in real life. So I'm just gonna make really, almost like a little oval, all right? Little oval at the bottom, it's like a breadstick almost, at the bottom of our heart. Now, I wanna make the top part. The top part is where all the liquid would go inside, okay? So 
I'm just going to draw a little smokestack at the top. Sort of like that. Oh, that's off center. Yeah, it's okay to make mistakes. We just correct them, right? That's why it was useful to bring the eraser. Smart. All right. And then I'm going to do another little sort of breadstick thing. A little oval at the top too. Okay. There you go. Kind of looks like a perfume bottle now. Uh, now we need our handles. Not all M4s have handles, but this one certainly does. So, I'm just going to make like little ears on top. Nice little ears. You do one ear and then you do a little inner ear. Okay? Wow, this is really working out well. So there you go. Those are all the shapes that you need. A heart, uh, uh, a heart in the middle, you have your little oval at the bottom, you have your little smokestack at the top, and then another oval, and then you have your two ears to make your handle, all right? What I'm going to do now with my eraser is I'm going to erase that middle part of the heart and the parts that separate the handle from the heart, okay? So now it's all clear. Now what I'm gonna do is, I think, does this show up well enough on the camera? So it does. So I'm gonna go straight into coloring. We don't even need to use our Sharpie. And then once we get coloring, then we're going to uh, start to tell some stories, all right? So I'm using really light crayons uh, so that it doesn't interfere with the black crayon after. So I'm using this color one, this color one. This one kinda looks like boogers, but we're gonna use it anyway. Uh, I also have pink because I love pink. Um, so now what you're going to do is you can color the inside of your vessel any way you want. You just need to fill up the entirety of the amphora. So what I'm going to do for mine is I'm going to start with my pink crayon and just really fill in the top of it, okay? Yesterday when I was doing the demos, I did a rainbow on the inside of my amphora because I love rainbows and they're really cute and they look nice um, and they make me feel happy and I like feeling happy. So then, see, I'm filling it all up with pink. Now what I'm gonna do underneath of that is we're gonna give Booger Color one a chance. We're gonna give that a shot, all right? So then I'm gonna put it in right underneath. Oh, it kinda looks like mustard, if that's like a little bit more appetizing for people. All right, the goal is to fill it all up. I'm not gonna fill it all up now because I wanna make sure I just get all the directions across to you and then I can tell you some stories, okay? And then again, right underneath of it, I'm gonna use this like peach flavored one um, and I'm gonna put that right underneath of it too. Again, I'm not filling it all up. We're sort of doing a cooking show style today because I've already done uh, one that we're gonna use for the etching after. So you can see on mine, I've drawn my outline of my vessel. I have all my, I have my color on the inside. What you do after you color the entire uh, vessel any way you want is you're gonna take your black crayon, okay? Trusty black crayon, Ray and Remy want you to know that you need a lot of black crayon for this, okay? So then what you do is we're gonna draw, we're gonna color right over top of the colors we just put in. We're gonna put black over top of the, my pink and my yellow and my peach colors that I put inside my vessel. And what you're gonna do first is you're gonna go all in the same, same line, okay? So I'm gonna start by going horizontal, so sideways across my vessel, okay? You see I'm going sideways across, I'm not scribbling through it, I'm going one direction, all right? Much like the band. Uh, fill it all in. Now again, to save time here, and because I want to tell some stories, I'm not going to do the whole thing. Once you've completed the inside of your scratch art all one way, the horizontal way, then you're going to go vertical, okay? Vertical. So up and down. So we, went, we did, we colored it in with black sideways first, and now we're going uh, up and down with the black too, okay? And that's because we want to get as much of the black crayon on top and cover up all the colors underneath as possible so that once we're done, we can actually draw a picture into it with our sharp utensil, okay? So as an example, I can draw a heart over top. You see how I did that heart? 
I used my pencil, my skewer, and I drew a heart right on top of the black crayon, all right? And if you want, I can now scratch up all the, the black crayon in the middle, and now you can see the whole heart, all right? So that's what you have to do. Color it all in any way you want, then cover it when black, and then you can decorate it any which way that you choose. Uh, because we're sort of doing ancient, um, talking a little bit about ancient stories and civilizations and objects today, uh, and because this is from ancient Rome and Greece, uh, I made a Hercules yesterday, okay? Now, today on mine, I'm going to, see, I've already actually completed one. So this is the one that I'm actually gonna draw on in a bit. Um, that's all fully uh, covered in black. Today, uh, because we're talking about stories, on my amphora, I'm gonna draw some pictures that remind me of one of my favorite ROM stories, the day we had a water fight at the ROM, okay? And that's gonna be the final story that we do. You can draw anything you want on your amphora, you can do any design, but for me, I'm gonna tell a story on mine about the time we had a water fight, all right? And I'm gonna use my utensil to do that. But before we do that, let's talk a little bit about stories. Okay? I was sort of mentioning off the top that at the ROM at camp, we love to tell stories when we do our lessons because we find that they're a great way for people to learn. Um, and so like, what are stories? Stories are ways that we talk about our experiences in life. Okay, And it can be real things that have happened. It can be imaginary things. Uh, it can be used to explain anything. And often they can, stories can be used to provide a moral. So here's my first story of the day. It's the time a teacher at the ROM lost a, the, a small triceratops beak on their desk. Now, I wanna start off by saying that this teacher was one of our great science teachers at the ROM, one of the best we ever had, okay? Um, but this teacher in particular uh, sometimes would bring stuff to their desk, sometimes to fix things, and then put other stuff on top of it and forget about it. And this person, one time, and I'm not putting them on blast here by naming them, but they left this beak that they fixed, the triceratops beak, the mouth part, on their desk for not one, not two, not three, but over five years. They had so much stuff on their desk that they left this beak on it and it got lost with everything that they had. Then when this teacher went off and retired and they very much deserved it, they had a wonderful career, um, and as we were putting everything away, guess what we found? We found the Triceratops beak. Um, and so really the moral of this story, okay, because this is how we use stories sometimes to tell morals, is that you should clean up after yourself and put your stuff away because you don't want to lose something as cool and as great a teaching object as a Triceratops fossil, okay? Um, so that's one way that we can use stories. We can use them to tell, uh, to explain morals. Um, now, where do you all see stories in your life? Okay, think about things about your life where you hear or see stories. That could be a storybook. Maybe mom or dad or yaya will tell you these stories at nighttime when you're going to bed or before night, uh, before nap. Um, you might see stories on the TV shows that you watch or the movies that you watch, okay? And right now, I know we're all having a ton more screen time, and that's okay. This is a new place that we're working in now, and we're allowed more screen time. Uh, you might see uh, stories in video games, and you might see even stories in the play that you do. Um, if you're playing with your Lego, or you're playing with your action figures, or your dolls, you create stories and narratives in how they play. I remember when I was young, I loved playing with my dinosaurs, and I would always recreate a dinosaur park, much like Jurassic Park, in my living room. My mom knows this, those toys were everywhere. For some reason, me, myself, I didn't play with my toys in my room. The room was for sleeping. I played with my toys in the living room, and boy did my mom have to live through that. Uh, how do you tell stories? Um, you, again, you can do it through your play, but also, you know when like your mom or your dad picks you up from school or camp and they're like, what did you do today? Um, and you tell them what you did, that's a way of telling stories too. Now, one of my favorite things about being a camp director at the ROM is I stand at the door at the end of every day of camp. I think it's really important to be visible and to see all our families and parents and kids, okay? And I like to say bye at the end of the day. Um, 
And so one of the things that I always hear at the end of a day at camp at the ROM is what these kids learned. And so I'll always remember the day where, you know, mom will be like, what did you learn about today? And the kid will be like, mom, mom, did you know, did you know that birds are dinosaurs and that I had a chicken sandwich today? So mom, you gave me a dinosaur to eat for lunch. That's the kind of story. Um, they'll talk about how in the morning we went to China and in the afternoon we went to Egypt and I'm so tired because they were able to travel all through the ROM and really through the world all day learning all sorts of spectacular things. One of the most special things that had ever happened was uh, one of our kids, um, as soon as he saw his mom coming to pick him up at the end of the day, said, Mom, I held a piece of Mars. And his mom said, oh, I'm sure you didn't. I'm sure it was just a red rock. And the boy said, no, 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 I did. I held a piece of the planet Mars. And she was like, no, it was probably like a made up one, like a reproduction. And he was very insistent. He said, no, 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 I did. And so they went up to me and they said, um, now my boy told me that he held a piece of Mars, but that's another planet. Is that possible? And I said, yes. And what did I have in my very little pocket? But a piece of that Mars that I showed that group earlier today. And that's a really special thing because the ROM has some of the most of another planet in the entire world, okay? We have so much of Mars. So that's another way that we can tell stories about our experiences. Um, all through time, people have told stories, right? They tell stories uh, through cave paintings. They tell stories through oral traditions. They'll tell stories um, through sculptures and through drawing, which finally gets us to what we're doing today. Um, we're looking at some ancient stuff. And so very quickly, other ways that other uh, ancient societies told stories is here we have the Wall of Punt, uh, the voyage to Punt that Queen Achepsut undertook uh, in ancient Egypt, a very important trade uh, trip. And that's documented uh, in real life, but we have a reproduction of it at the ROM. And ancient Egyptians used hieroglyphs and pictures to tell many of their stories, okay? We also have this wonderful mural at the ROM in our China gallery that shows off a bunch of deities as, as well. So that's really cool. We can tell stories in so many different ways. But today, another way the stories were told were through amphora, okay? These vessels. Now, I wrote a note in my little notes over here that I have to make sure I do my art this time because last time I did a really bad job because I kept forgetting and I told stories. So I'm, again, telling a story about a water fight at the ROM. So I'm drawing in a bunch of raindrops on mine. Um, but amphoras, so what are they? They were vessels, containers. I have some vessels over here. We use this to water our plants. Um, and then we also have another vessel over here. I'm not going to say exactly what was in this one before, but it was fun. Um, so there's lots of different vessels. Uh, and this is another one. An amphora. Okay, so now you know what it did. It held stuff. And often uh, in ancient Greece and in ancient Rome, these amphoras, that again, are all over my shirt, we would carry liquids. Uh, olive oil was really, really important to their society. And so they would carry these things. And sometimes you would draw on it or you'd stamp on the amphora, like what, what it was, so that people knew. Um, amphora, ours, we're making ours out of paper. But back then, they were made out of clay, okay? It was ceramic. And what they do is, if you've ever worked with clay before, is they make on a wheel, like a pot, or you even do it with a pinch pot, okay? Uh, and then you do coils around the top, okay? You make those like sausages or snakes, and you roll them out, and you put them around the top so you can control the shape and make your handles, okay? So they were all made out of uh, clay. Uh, and it was really important and used for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years um, in the ancient world and very, very popular. Um, they were also really, really plentiful because everyone was using them for, um, their, for, the, for containing things. Uh, that sometimes that there were so many that they wouldn't even know what to do with them and it was hard to recycle them sometimes. So there's this like really big uh, mound in Rome that you can still visit today. And I'm gonna try and get the word right, uh, the name right. It's Monte, uh, Pistachio, okay? I had to write pistachio in the notes to try and get it right. But it's this place that's composed of uh, an estimated like 50 million of these amphora pots that are all broken up and put onto this one mound and now it's like covered with grass and things like that, okay? It was really, really plentiful. Um, 
They were decorated in two main ways in the ancient world, specifically in ancient Rome and Greece. First, you had um, the black figure drawings, which are seen here. Uh, and then afterward, they started to make the figures in red instead, and they thought that that stood out better and they could make better detail. What you would do is you would sort of score, like we're doing with our pieces, where you would want the black glaze to go, um, and then you'd paint over top of it after it came out of the kiln um, to uh, draw your figures. Uh, it was really cool when I was learning about this, is in a lot of the ancient games in ancient Egypt, like games like the Olympics, but other ones as well, is that winners would get an amphora. And on the amphora, instead of like a gold medal, on the amphora it would be a picture of what you just raced in, okay? So were you in a chariot race? Were you in a running race? So it would be a picture of that. Then what they would do is um, they would fill it up with olive oil and then that would be your prize. Imagine, what a functional gift. Would you rather have a gold medal of which you cannot cook things from it or would you love a beautiful uh, giant amphora filled with olive oil that can be used for cooking? And then after the olive oil is gone, you can use the amphora to put other stuff in. I don't know, seems more functional. I'm into it, I like it, I want the amphora prize. Um, so that was really cool um, as well, that, that, that those were prizes, okay? I really like art, and what I love about these amphoras, again, is that they show these stories, and often they would tell stories on them of like Hercules, of their, all of their um, gods and legends, and that was a way that they would tell their story, right? And that's a really interesting thing. Now, if you watch the Hercules film from Disney, uh, they do a really great job of using amphora through the film to, as a narrative device, as like a as, as a way to show what is happening in the story, okay? And so if you want like some additional viewing after this, highly encourage watching that film. Um, so I know we're getting close to the end and I still haven't done a lot of my art. I really hope that you show us your art too. Um, let us know by tagging us in the pictures and things like that. Before I tell my final, final story, I just wanna make sure I didn't miss any other ones. Okay, great, I did good. So, um, Many years ago at Summer Club, I think it was my second year in the office, we had a really hot summer, okay? Um, and right now I try and remind myself of all the fun things that I got to do outside because I can't wait to do them again once we can go back outside. And it was so, so hot that a lot of the kids at camp, we couldn't go outside at break and we couldn't go outside at lunch. And a lot of our sports groups in the afternoon, they were having trouble too. Even our field trip groups, we weren't sending them on all the field trips because it was so hot. It was more than 25 degrees. It was more than 30 degrees. It was around 40 degrees for like this one session at camp. Now, what I really like about camp is, especially overnight camp, is that sense of community and coming together, right? You know, at, oh, if you've ever gone to overnight camp, maybe you've done color days or theme days. Those are really cool. You have a lot of fun in your cabins. Uh, you sing a lot of songs. You tell a lot of stories. You tell even ghost stories, which hopefully one of these episodes will tell some of our wrong ghost stories, which are a lot of fun and have a moral to them as well. Um, and so at ROM camp, we try and do a lot of those things too. We think it's really important to be silly and play songs and sing and do chants um, in the same way that you do at overnight camp. Just because we're at the museum um, and we have like lots of ancient stuff doesn't mean we can't have fun and sing songs and do things. And so what we really wanted to do is we decided let's, uh, let's do an outside water fight all of the kids at camp, okay? At ROM camp, there's like 350 kids and 100 staff, okay? Volunteers, LITs, uh, our counselors, our teachers, and we said we're gonna put them all outside. If it's gonna be this hot, we might as well get soaking wet. Um, so what we did is we spent like two whole days before the water, uh, before water fight day, and we sent letters home to all the parents to let them know, bring your bathing shorts, get ready, um, and then we spent two days making um, water balloons, filling up, getting a whole bunch of sponges to throw. Right, I should do a, a balloon on mine because I'm telling the story of water balloon day or water fight day. And so we had all of these things to, to, to really enjoy, uh, sponges and uh, spray bottles. And we sent all of our kids outside into Philosopher's Walk and we gave them all things to have a lot of fun. And it was a really special memory for us. We even named one of our camp awards after it. 
um, because it was a way that we all got to come together. And it's really fun that you get to have fun in your cabin or in your camp, like your specific group. But it's nice when we get to collectively do something and have it become a giant memory. Because those memories, later on, form stories, which I think is really cool. And so last week I talked to you about the time that the power went out. And so today's big ROM story was the time that camp had a big, giant water fight. And stories can be used to tell all sorts of things. So I did a couple of balloons on mine. I put some uh, like raindrops. Uh, I, I'm trying, I'm trying. That's what I did with mine. I would love to see yours. Okay, I think we're wrapping up. So what did we learn about today? We learned about stories and how they can tell morals and tell our experiences and we can use our imagination to tell them. We use stories in the type of play that we do. We hear stories in books and we, uh, we learn stories from people in our lives who like to tell us about what was like, life was like for them in the same way that we like to tell our parents about what we did at camp or at school today. Okay? Um, we learned that art tells stories. Okay? Songs. Uh, Taylor Swift, a great storyteller. Um, uh, in sculptures and, um, and in so many different pieces of art, like amphora. Okay? Uh, we learned about amphoras and what they were used for and why they're a big deal. Uh, we also learned a type of art technique today, which is scratch art. You don't have to just contain it in an amphora. You can do it in whatever you want. You can take a normal piece of, um, of paper, any size, cute size is good, uh, color it any which way with crayons, okay, and then use the black crayon on top to do any sort of illustration that you want. And the really fun thing too with this art technique is if you decide I didn't like that, um, I don't like that balloon that I did, you can just cover it up with your black crayon and start again, okay? There are no mistakes in scratch art because you can just fill them up and do it all over again, okay? Um, so that's, that was today. I want to give some credits right now as we start to wrap up. Uh, I want to say thank you to Brady, Jackie, and Taylor at The ROM for all their digital work. I'd love to send a big shout out to our producer of The ROM Kids show, uh, Courtney behind the camera. Um, I want to say a big thank you to all The ROM Kids teachers who come up with all of these stories um, and art projects all the time. One of the big stories that was recently told to our older kids was about um, tigers, like domesticated tigers, and how there's so many tigers um, in the States, more so than in the wild. And that was even before Tiger King came out. And then finally, I want to send a big shout out to all of our families, all of our kids. Whether you come to camp or you don't, we miss you so much and we can't wait for you all to come back. We hope that this type of show is a nice way um, for us to connect in the meantime. Um, this will appear on the ROM website um, soon enough. So if you didn't, uh, didn't do all the art now, uh, you can do it later. Or if you're not on Instagram, you can see it in another way, okay? Let us know what you thought. Tell us some other ideas of cool shows that we could do, things that you would like to learn about, things you'd like to make. Uh, we do so many different things at the ROM, and we'd love to be able to share them all with you. Um, make sure you show us your art by adding ROM Toronto uh, in your Insta stories or in your Instagram posts. Uh, and that's about it. I'm Kieran. I can be found on Twitter and on Instagram at Kieran C. Mukherjee. Just Google me. I'm out there. Uh, and that's it for now, okay? Bye from the museum. We can't wait to see you next time, okay? Have so much fun. Bye, everyone.